Case Analysis Part 3 Decision Criteria This video will discuss the second link in your chain of case analysis, your decision criteria. I'll discuss how important decision criteria are to this process. I'll define what makes for a good decision criteria. And then I'll close off with some examples of bad habits you will want to avoid. Your decision criteria are bloody important. They are the key to ensuring you're solving a company's critical issues. Think of it this way. Your critical issues and situation analysis are all about identifying critical threats and critical opportunities. Your option analysis and recommendations are where you propose a plan of action to solve those critical issues. It is your decision criteria that link these two halves together. It is your decision criteria that ensure the option you select is actually solving the critical issue rather than just being something you think is cool to do. Remember, you are not trying to impress a teacher. You are trying to convince a business person to put the survival and success of their company in the hands of your recommendations. To do that, they must have confidence your recommendations solve their critical issues and it is your decision criteria that create this link. If your decision criteria are poor, a business owner will not know if your recommendations will really solve their problem. So what is a decision criteria? Think of it as a performance metric the company must meet to demonstrate the critical issue is resolved. It is a performance target you want the company to hit, because if they hit it, you know their critical issues are solved. Later, when you consider options, you are going to judge how well each option will hit this target that you've selected. For example, let's say you've done a financial ratio analysis of a company and determined the company is insolvent. Okay, stop for a second. Do you know what financial ratios you'd look at to determine if a company is insolvent? If not, pause this video, Google it. Okay. So let's say you know the company is insolvent because the current ratio is 0 0.6. Now you need to figure out a decision criteria that would indicate this problem has been solved. So what would that be? Hmm. I know. If in the next year the current ratio equaled 1.0 or higher, that would show the critical issue of insolvency has been fixed. So you set your decision criteria as the following. The company must achieve a current ratio of 1.0 or greater within one year. Now, when you look at your options, you compare each option to see what impact it will have on the current ratio, and you pick the option that's going to raise the current ratio to 1.0 or higher. I want you to notice something about the decision criteria I selected. It is SMART. Do you remember what SMART means? SMART means Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, Time Bound. Here's why it's so important. Let's look at the S and M. Specific and Measurable. When your criteria are specific and measurable, you have a precise target. Because your target is measurable, you can actually monitor your company's performance. Because your target is specific, you know precisely when your company performs at a level needed to resolve the critical issue. If you miss the S or the M, you cannot monitor your company's performance, and you do not know when its performance is adequate to solve the critical issue. Now let's look at the A, Achievable. This means that your target must be within the realm of possibility. If it is not possible to meet the target, then what use is it? You can never achieve it. A target that you can never hit is kind of useless. But hey, what happens if the performance metric needed to resolve the critical issue is, in fact, unattainable for the company? I mean, this sometimes happens. If you find this is the case, Absolutely no realistic option can ever meet the decision criteria, and the decision criteria must be met to resolve the critical issue, then stop. Think about the criteria you've selected. Do they really need to be set so high to resolve the critical issue? If the answer is yes, then this may be a sign that the company should 
activate an exit strategy by either selling the business or exiting the market. All right, back to SMART. R. R means relevant. In this context, relevant means it is actually focused on a critical issue or provides meaningful profits. Remember, your decision criteria is a target. You need to make sure your target is centered right over your critical issue. Otherwise, hitting that target is a waste of energy. So make sure your decision criteria is linked to your critical issue. Finally, T means time bound. Time is money. Critical issues always have time constraints. If you are facing a critical threat, you must act before that threat ruins your business. If you are facing a critical opportunity, then you must act before your competition steal the opportunity away from you. Your decision criteria must have a deadline by which they must be achieved so that everyone is aware of the time constraints the critical issues place on them. Now let me give you an example of a bad decision criteria. Here we go. The company must improve its brand reputation within the year. Do you see what's wrong with that? It's not specific or measurable. I mean, what the heck is brand reputation? How do you measure it? How do you know when you've improved it enough to actually solve the critical issue? This decision criteria is useless. Let me give you an example of another bad habit that I sometimes see. Let's go back to that company with the current ratio of 0 0.6. Let's say you analyze some options. You calculate that the option that you think is really cool will improve the current ratio from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. You like the option, so therefore you set your decision criteria as must achieve current ratio of 0 0.8 or more in one year to ensure the option that you like gets selected. You see what's wrong with this example? A current ratio of 0 0.8 means the company is still insolvent. The critical issue is the company was insolvent and your decision criteria will ensure that it remains insolvent. Therefore your decision criteria is missing the R. It is not relevant because it is not linked to your critical issue. So remember, decision criteria get linked to your critical issues. They do not get selected to justify your option. That's a bad habit. They must be linked to your critical issue. Okay, so this video has covered the essential elements of selecting good decision criteria. Remember, good decision criteria ensures you analyze your options to determine whether or not they will resolve the critical issues. The next video lecture will cover how to properly analyze your options.